Let's see if we can get him dialed in here. Just trying to connect. There we go. Don, how are you? How are can you? you hear me? I'm good. I can hear you fine. That was that was not working out so well, though. Well, that's, uh, I, I'm glad we got it working out. And, and if you were pulling a fast one and just like pranking me, I looked pretty ridiculous for the last two minutes asking if you could hear me and whatnot. So well played. I think you just pulled a fast one on me. <laughs> good. How you doing? I'm great, man. How are you? How are you holding up? Right. How's everything going? I'm holding up okay. I'm uh, like most people in the country and throughout the world. I'm uh, uh, is ensconced with my family and our home, and uh, my kids are grown. So I've got a, a five-month-old around, a new granddaughter, and everybody's working and trying to exercise and eating well and and just uh, trying to do everything we can to stay safe and healthy, Jamie. Yeah, you've, uh, I, I imagine it, it's probably a, a kind of a weird time for you because you're one of the most busy on the go people that I've ever met. And yet here you are kind of grounded in one spot. Um, I imagine everything for you has been going kind of fast paced on the phone and are you tired of doing Zoom calls yet and, and Instagram lives? Yeah, well, I've been, I've done a lot more Zoom calls <laughs> than Instagram lives, but it's, uh, you know, it, it's so unprecedented you know i i have calls that start every morning with my senior staff and uh we work all day and uh and into the night and uh, as you'd imagine it starts in almost a triage approach to getting through all the critical issues and now we're managing through to what do we need to do to get our players back to train and then come up with the right safe and and smart plans for returning to play and at the same time thinking about what does the 2021 season look like and how do we ensure that we're spending some of our time thinking about our future while we're spending a lot of time just trying to get through every day? Yeah, I mean, it's it, like you said, it's unprecedented these times. It's it's unprecedented how many times we've said the word unprecedented probably in the last two months as well. And, right. you know, it's one of these that we're, we're trying to navigate these uncharted waters. And and for you, I, I you kind of touch on a little bit and we'll dive a little bit deeper as we uh, continue on with this live here. But what have you, I guess maybe walk us through what the last couple of weeks have been like, because it seems as though maybe we're turning a little bit of a corner and, and things look like there may be a light at the end of the tunnel, a little bit closer than where they were. How, how have things in the last couple of weeks been kind of evolving in your eyes? Well, you know, I think the way to answer that, Jamie, is it's evolving around the world and certainly evolving in our country, depending on where you live, what city and what state. Uh, we're here in New York, and clearly, I think most people will say it hasn't evolved much here. There's still strict stay-at-home orders, and when you do go out, social distancing and, and required masks and the like. But then there are places like the state of Tennessee and Florida and Georgia and many other places across the country where they're beginning to open up. And when they begin to open up, that has a, a positive impact on our ability to get back to doing what our fans want us to do, our partners want to do, want to do, our players want to do, which is get back to MLS. And uh, as you know, yesterday, five of our teams began individual training and many, many more will starting today and throughout the week as they get their protocol approved by the league, very, very strict guidelines on uh, what you need to do with social distancing and how close uh, players and staff can be to each other. And then obviously, we're more optimistic about what a return to play uh, plan could look like. I think a month ago, uh, we were very pessimistic, but um, I think our country has done a pretty good job of flattening the curve, which is what the objective was. We need to be mindful of and focused on continuing to follow local guidelines because flattening the curve really requires us all to be uh, very focused and committed to all the guidelines that local health authorities set out. So, you know, I would say we're cautiously optimistic. No, it's really well said, Don. And, and you mentioned it just a moment ago. Uh, a couple teams started training yesterday in one-on-one -on -one settings. Uh, Nashville SC scheduled to have their first day today. Um, what has kind of been the initial feedback from those few clubs that had their one-on-one -on -one training uh, at their respective training grounds? Did it go well? Did it seem to be seamless? Were there any challenges that came about from that? Or did it seem like, hey, we had a good plan in place and this worked? Well, it's so early, but so far, uh, no challenges. I think everybody who was at every player and every club that's been able to get back to individual training has been very pleased. They're 
there's a lot of coverage of that. We were one of the, uh, the, the first leagues to be able to do that. And that's not anything that uh, matters much in the big uh, swing of things. But you just got to remember, we only play two games of our season. We've got our whole year ahead of us to try to get games in, try to get our players back into shape, try to figure out what our plan will be for broader return to training small groups and then full team training and then ultimately what will the rest of 2020 look like too premature to talk about that but obviously a lot of planning going into uh, what those scenarios could uh, could possibly be throughout the league and certainly i won't uh, i won't put you up any sort of timeline because obviously there is no real timeline for a, a return to play and, and what that looks like with fans without fans as of yet but one thing I did want to ask you is you had thrown out the word, uh, the word studio show, and maybe that could be a way when we return that that's the format that it comes back in. For those who may not be familiar with what you mean by a studio show, would you mind diving a little bit deeper into what a studio show broadcast of games looks like in your eyes? Well, you know, I think most sports fans are beginning to accept the fact that more than likely games will be played without fans for a period of time. And then we need to respect all the respective leagues need to figure out what does that look like? What does a baseball game look like with no fans or potentially a hockey game or a basketball game? And obviously in soccer, we're thinking about the same thing. And, you know, we have a unique opportunity to produce those games wherever they're played, whether they're in a neutral location or in home markets and try to be creative try to bring some of the innovation that has been so uh, much a part of the production of major league sports in our country. I think it's been less a part of the soccer and football world. And I think that's just because of the global nature of the game and the international rules and one central body that is determining those rules and officials that are independently tasked with trying to have every game adhere to those rules. But we're trying to think about you know, bringing the fan closer to our players, perhaps more interactivity with audio and video, uh, perhaps some unique uh, data uh, uh, engagement so that we can do some things that we've been thinking about for some time. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's really interesting. And it kind of gets the wheels turning as to how do you make the experience if fans can't be there at the stadium experience? Because that, to be quite honest, is, is one of the best parts of Major League Soccer, the in-stadium in-game experience but if we don't have that uh, by guidelines that were placed under rightfully so you know what else can we do has has there been any steps forward as to maybe this is the idea we want to try first or we think this could really be done maybe kind of dive in a little bit deeper into that how could we be more interactive with fans well you know when we do return to play and at some point we will it is a real focus of ours to think about how could we engage our supporters. Supporters really are the lifeblood of MLS, and, and I like to think of sports overall. They are the, the engine that drives so much of the energy in and around our games that differentiates us from, from other sports. So we're thinking about that, Jamie. We're a little premature to talk about what that might look like, but clearly uh, we've got to find a way that those games are – representing in some way a connection to a local fan. So particularly if it's in a neutral site, how do we find ways that our supporters are a part of that? So stay tuned. Yeah, no, it's exciting. And, and we're excited to see where this uh, could be headed. And it's, as you said earlier, unprecedented times. It is that, but coming from this, what new innovation, what new addition can we do? And, and I'm excited to see where that goes. And so let's, let's kind of peel the layers back of, of where we are now in Nashville um, you've been a part of this journey that has been well documented in the Dream Together series that Nashville's put out, uh, presented by Renaissance Bank. And, and it's kind of taken the beginning steps of Nashville SC all the way through their inception of Major League Soccer. And I want to take you back to a, a day in December. I think it was December 20th, 2017. A little bit happier times. Do you remember this photo right here? You remember this I moment do. right here? The right, good job. You, you, you did that pretty well. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I'm a one trick pony. That's all I got. Uh, yeah. How's it been seeing the growth of Nashville from, you know, it's funny because I think John Ingram said it himself in the docu docu series that they maybe were at the bottom of the pile for expansion teams, but then quickly made it to the top. And you said it was maybe one of the most impressive expansion bids. 
how has the growth been in your eyes and, and what have you, I guess, maybe been most proud of with Nashville SC? Well, I think it's just been spectacular from the very get-go. I mean, John Ingram and his partners are so embedded in the community, love the city, love the state and region, really, really came into MLS with a, a strong belief in our league, in the sport, and how the city and the club can come together and create new opportunity and create excitement for everybody, not just those that are uh, the original uh, supporters of uh, of Nashville uh, SC. So it's it's been fantastic and heartbreaking that we could not continue the momentum after the opening game. And I, uh, the, the hiring of Ian Eyre, who is just such a smart and optimistic guy. Uh, I speak to so many of our club people. Uh, and when I speak to Ian, I always walk away feeling a little bit better uh, throughout the day because he's been through so much in his life. He's got such great experience and he has such a positive attitude. And I think that energy and that optimism is reflected in the brand. And from opening day with Jude and the Lion and the guitar rift, and uh, I am still waiting for my yellow Gibson MLS, uh, uh, yellow Nashville guitar that I can't wait to prop up in my office. I have the LP pressed and that's already framed uh, in 425th Avenue. So the rituals were smart and great. That opening game was one of the great experiences of my 20 years as commissioner. I literally was just in a state of awe. And uh, it'll come back. It's going to take some time, but uh, we're going to get that back. And we're going to look back on this as a obviously very, very, very trying, traumatic uh, period in in our lives and certainly in our league and in the sport of soccer and the industry overall, but uh, we're going to get it back and the pulse that Nashville pulse is going to come back. Oh man, you just took me down memory lane, taking it back to February 29th at Nashville. SC, the first match at Nissan stadium, the inaugural match uh, in major league soccer. Uh, you were there. You've been a part of expansion from 10 teams when you started as commissioner in 1999 all the way back in 1999. Has it seemed like 20 years? And it's, uh, it's been a long you know, time, huh? <laughs> it, it seems like that and more. <laughs> <laughs> I bet some days more than others, especially right now. Yeah. But so it's 10 teams when you took over. Nashville comes in with Inter-Miami this year. We're now up to 26. And, and you said it, touched on it just a moment ago, uh, how incredible the in-stadium experience was. But if we go back to that night, what was your big takeaway at the end of the evening when you get back in your – your, your Uber uh, black back to the hotel and you're getting on the plane back to New York, that feeling you were left with from the home opener that maybe you still carry with you today. What, what's the biggest thing, biggest takeaway from that, that you just resonates right here? How exciting and relevant uh, this whole club will be for the city, for the league and soccer in North America. Uh, you know, a huge crowd, an incredible environment. There were people that were walking around who had never been to a game and just were in shock. And I knew it. And John Ingram and Ian Air knew it, and you knew it, Jamie. And so many people that have been around the club uh, have known it for years, but it over-delivered. And that doesn't happen that often in life. So I, I have enormous faith, hope, and anticipation of getting back and just delivering that excitement, that passion, that energy, and that success. And it's going to be uh, awesome to see it continue to grow. You got that first little taste if you're a Nashville SC fan of that that home opener, and now you know we'll be anxiously waiting for when that returns. But let's uh, let, let's let's lighten the mood because I know you're you're so dialed in all the time. So let's let's see what Don Garber is all about during this quarantine. What have you? What new hobbies have you picked up um, over this this quarantine? I know you don't have a whole bunch of time, but surely you've you found something that. Uh, you found some time for that maybe you normally wouldn't have. Well, you know, I, 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 I heard somebody say to me the other day that, um, and it was a top level CEO and, and he was saying he was trying to find some time each day to do something that they always wanted to do. In his case, it was to learn a foreign language, but I will tell you, I've had very little time. We have a, a meeting every early every morning with my senior staff we were talking about we almost can't work at this pace you know on a much longer because it's 24 7 it's been going on this way for six or seven weeks nobody's 
you know, in their office, everybody's in home, whether they're isolated by themselves or whether with their family. Uh, I have always been a interested in cycling. I've always had a road bike. I have not been able to get on, out on it much uh, where I currently live. Uh, but while I've been in quarantine, quarantine in a different uh, house, I've been able to get out on that bike. I will do that at some point today. You can follow me on Strava if you want and uh, and see my my biking exploits and my son-in-law and my son are doing the same thing. So I'm in a great spot for riding. I've been doing a little more of that than usual. Awesome. So, so you're not a Peloton guy, you're a Strava guy. A, is that right? I'm a Peloton guy too. I have one. I have a Peloton. Bike there we go. Guys. All right. If people want to keep up with you, this is where you get to do the, uh, the self promotion. Right. What's, how can they find you on that? So they can, they can ride. They, with they, they, they can't Jamie. No, they can't, they can't keep up. <laughs> no, that's totally fine. You've seen like the likes of uh, like Stu Holden and, Servando Carrasco, those guys are, are tweeting out about, and uh, I think um, Joe Bendick as well. So it's, it's been a good way to keep shape, and, and I know some guys maybe not by choice are having to take up cycling to stay in shape too. So it seems right. to be the new trend. Uh, I am trending away from that. I'm actually not on there. I'm not in playing shape anymore, but that's fine. You get to talk about soccer, and uh, you don't have to try to keep up with those guys anymore. Uh, any, right. any shows you're getting to binge watch, anything? You know, I, I – it, the family does get together and uh and was, there's five of us here in the house you know i finished uh, recently narcos mexico and which yeah. i thought was really great but if you watch that i don't remember what what season it was but there was one scene where the bad guy is on the screen and it says out of crisis comes opportunity sounds like you set me up for this but you know i'm trying to think of this whole crisis and trying to find the optimism and opportunity with within this. Uh, I've just started the new season of Billions, uh, which is always fun and almost uh, like cotton candy to watch. It's a little bit crazy, but much more than that, I haven't been watching too much, uh, unfortunately. You're dialed in, you're, uh, you're making this, uh, this whole thing tick and, and progress forward. And so uh, we appreciate, you know, obviously everything that you're doing, Don. It's, uh, it's been amazing to see. And, and I mean, getting a chance to talk to you, being a part of this growth, I've been expansion teams that seem to kind of follow wherever I've gone. I came into Real Salt Lake. I was with Orlando City. They made the jump. Minnesota, they made the jump. Uh, right. Now with Nashville, I, I like where I'm at. Can you can we pump the brakes on on expansion? Because I don't want to keep having to move. Yeah, yeah. Stick, stick where you are. Nashville's yeah. a great city. I like it. It's uh, it's been great to me so far. Um, so we're gonna get to to 30 teams here uh, soon enough. Um, does does this kind of alter anything with plans thinking beyond because we've got to be so focused in the short term with expansion or are people seeing that now more than ever sports is so valued and and a mls expansion team is coveted is there any possibility any idea what the longer term future of major league soccer looks like on the other side of all of this yeah you know listen we're not really thinking about expansion uh beyond 30 right now we're really really focused getting this season completed in whatever form we can and then ensuring and this is really important Jamie that 2021 comes out strong and that we can build back the momentum what we had leading into our 25th season this current one and all the uh, the energy behind the launch of Miami and Nashville so you know there's a lot of work to do and uh, we're going to focus in on what the short term is now and you know be sure as I mentioned before we're spending time thinking about opportunity but Right now, our focus is the rest of this year in 21. Yeah. And you, does you get a sense of excitement, a sense of optimism when you see Germany set the date that they're going to be able to return? I know you've got a good um, relationship with the president of the DFL. Um, have you spoken with, with Christian uh, over there about how what their return looks like? Are you in talks with other heads of other leagues to be able to kind of collaboratively put your heads together yeah, on what the return looks it's like? A good question, but yeah, I'm, I'm friendly with Christian Seifert. We sit on a FIFA board together, uh, board committee together. Uh, they're, they've really got a great plan. He's a brilliant guy and, and their country is very aligned around their one big sport, which is football and the Bundesliga and the, on their national team. So uh, the, the virus hit there earlier than it hit here, and, and clearly uh, they're, they're a month or six weeks ahead of us and being able to manage and un understand it. So I do speak to him quite a bit. I haven't been speaking to many of the other leagues, though. Remember, so many of our owners own teams in the Premier League and in Syria, so I'm able to get my information about those leagues through 
uh, the owner of Bologna and the owner of Man City, etc. Yeah, well, and, and why we and obviously the, the Red Bulls that have uh, Red, Red Bull Leipzig and Red Bull Salzburg. Yeah, the soccer world is ironically small as, as it scales the entirety of the world. Uh, it seems to be this this well connected uh, league, and you're obviously in the midst of all of that. Um, one thing the players have been doing to stay connected with the communities is MLS Unites uh, that was launched at the beginning of April. Has that given you like a, a sense of warmth in your heart to see players? showing their appreciation for the frontline workers, for staying engaged with their respective communities where we live and work and reside and are part of the communities. Have you, have you felt that sense of pride about how successful MLS Nights has been? Yeah, very much so, Jamie. I mean, our guys are, have always been so committed to the community. They got good hearts. They got good souls. They get it. You know, we just had uh, a handful of our players participate in this broad uh, league-wide, sport-wide PSA about saluting workers and changing the name on the back of their jersey. I'm sure that you, awesome. you've seen that. Was that was really cool. And they've been very involved with us on MLS Unites and community-based programs, either virtually or now some of them are able to get out into the community. I just saw something with Luis Robles uh, out in, uh, uh, in the, you know, the community doing food delivery. So, you know, ultimately, our guys are great. And... Uh, I love them and uh, hope that they can get back to doing what they love, which is to go play soccer. Yeah, absolutely. And, and my big thanks to the players here in Nashville that are making the community better, yeah, all the, the frontline workers that, that are doing that. And um, Commissioner Garber, I, I want to say thank you for your time today. I Great. really appreciate I it. it. I always like to let my guests leave with the last word. Uh, anything that you'd like to say to any of the Nashville fans, the MLS fans, the soccer fans and sport fans that, that might be watching this might tune in. Um, and I'll leave you with the last word. Yeah, I mean, I know that, that the loss of your favorite team, your favorite uh, sport, you know, leaves a little hole in your heart, right? And, and we understand that, sympathetic to that, and are doing everything we can to bring MLS and National SC back, but to do it in a way that ensures we protect the, sa the safety and health of our players, our, our respective staffs, and, and obviously all of our fans. But hang in there. We'll be back soon. Great words. Thanks hey, Commissioner time, Garber, Jay. thank you so much for your time Take today. Care. All the best going forward, and, uh, and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much, Don. Be we good. appreciate it. All Bye -bye. right. Thank you so much, everybody watching. We really appreciate it. We will see you guys soon. Have a great rest of your day. My big thanks again to the soccer Don, Don Garber, for joining us. My name is Jamie Watson. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you soon.